Hey guys, it's Liz from Blue and Hazel and welcome back to my homeschool channel. If you're new here, uh, we do homeschool videos and I'd love to have you subscribe so that you don't miss anything. Be sure to hit the red button and it will let you know whenever we come out with a new video. Also, it helps me out a ton if you enjoy the video to just give it a like. So today's video, I'm going to be doing um, a comparison of Math with Confidence and Singapore Primary 2022. So if you've been following my channel, you know that we're using both of those for our math this year. And my third grader is currently doing um, the 3A and we have used Singapore since he was in first grade. We actually started 1A at the end of his first grade year after we'd finished another or almost finished um, master books. And we just kind of switched over to Singapore to try it out. And then um, my younger two kids are using Math with Confidence, second grade and kindergarten. We also used the first grade one last year. And so um, we're just gonna kind of stick with that. So how we ended up finding out about Math with Confidence, because I honestly thought we would all just do Singapore Primary 2022. It would be streamlined, easy. I'd have already purchased the home instructor's guides. It would be more cost efficient in some ways to do that. but. Um, I, when we first switched to Singapore, had a really hard time teaching addition their way. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. <laughs> I didn't learn math that way and I was like, I'm supposed to teach my kid what? So I was kind of on the verge of giving up. It was so frustrating, like first grade addition, okay? Like it, I just, I don't know, something was hard for me not clicking in how they teach math. and. Um, they don't, you, you're not learning by like memorizing math facts and memorizing flashcards. You are actually learning to break apart numbers and, um, you know, make these things called number bonds and you're making connections with fives and tens and using 10 frames. It was just so different. And so, um, instead of quitting, I said, I'm going to stop and I'm going to take a break. And we bought something called addition facts that stick by Kate Snell. It is a six week program that if you have a struggling, um, if you're struggling with addition facts, like stop what you're doing, go buy it. I will link it down below for you. It's the best. And um, what I found was that it taught me how to teach addition. It taught me exactly what to do with the visuals that we needed and the manipulative pieces. We played a board game every day in it. Um, there was a worksheet every day in it and my kids were learning their addition facts. It was so cool. Whereas um, with the Singapore 1A, I just couldn't figure out how they were explaining it. The home instructor's guide was confusing for me. I just couldn't figure it out. And so um, after we finished that, we went back to the Singapore with my oldest. Um, and what I realized is that, oh my goodness, this is the exact same thing we just learned in math in addition facts that stick with Kate Snow, except for her way was way easier to understand. But since I had that base of knowing exactly like what in the heck she was talking about, then I could go to Singapore math and be like, oh, this is exactly what they're talking about. I, when I found out that she has her own math curriculum she was developing, I was really wanting to try it, um, but like didn't necessarily want to do two different math curriculums with different kids. And I ended up just going and buying it. And I'm so glad I did because I love the way she teaches. Um, if you want a sample of how she teaches, seriously, just go buy Addition Facts with Stick because her whole math curriculum is that amazing. It's it's just like um, easy to follow, really fun visual games, hands-on, it's just awesome. So that's one of the reasons why for me, I'm not gonna at this point change what we're doing and it's because I enjoy teaching math. I can figure out how to teach their math. They are understanding the concepts and um, it, you know, is it's working. So I just don't want to change it because it's working. And um, right now she's developing the curriculum. It only goes up through second grade and third grade comes out in the summer. So she'll go all the way up to sixth, only bringing out one new one a year. And um, my third grader is too old for that. So he has to do something else. And I think Singapore is working for him. Um, it's a good fit for him. So we're just gonna keep doing that. Singapore will also go up through sixth grade as well but they don't have a kindergarten level in the 2022 version. You'll have to either choose a different version of Singapore math or um, you could do any other curriculum for kindergarten. Both of the curriculums have a student book and both of them have a teacher's guide. So my student book is not here for either one because we actually rip them apart week by week and um, 
So right right now, what I have to show you um, is the home instructor's guide for each. That's all that comes with Math with Confidence. With Singapore Math, there is a third book that you are recommended to purchase called Mastery and Beyond. And it um, you'll never do all three books in a day, thank goodness. Basically, the Mastery and Beyond is like spiral review built in. So every few days, instead of doing the student book worksheet, you'll do the review worksheet for Mastery and Beyond. So I have that now and um, the review with Math with Confidence is actually just built into the back page. So every student workbook on Math with Confidence, you have a front page that's new stuff, a back page that's review. And I think I heard a rumor that in the pilot program for the older kiddos, they're expanding as the, as the grade levels go up, they're adding an extra page. So there might be more worksheet, uh, more worksheets in the upper levels. Um, there's no online component to Math with Confidence, but there is an optional online component to um, Singapore 2022. So when you buy a home instructor's guide, you'll get an email with a login area. And on that login area, there's going to be something extra called reteach and there's going to be extension. And those are like harder thinking different types of problems that you can work on and print out. I personally don't use them because I cannot stand the idea of like adding more math onto our already kind of long math days with three kids doing math. And so um, if maybe we needed them and I was like really worried about, you know, are we doing enough? Maybe I would log in and try that, but I just don't feel like worried that we're not doing enough. So. Um, I want to just kind of simplify it and um, that just goes to show you that with Singapore there are so many ways that you can make it harder and less hard, longer, less long, more challenging, less challenging. Um, so when someone says they're doing Singapore math you really don't know like what they're doing. Like they could be doing so many different resources. They could be pulling from so many different resources spending a lot of time or a little time. They could be doing all of the hands-on activities or none of the hands-on activities, um, which is, you know, a big no-no in Singapore land, but, um, but you get the idea. There's So what is similar about these curriculums? Both of them have a really similar approach to how they teach addition and subtraction, and they both start with number bonds and um, making sets of 10 and making, you know, um, breaking numbers into fives and tens. And Kate actually um, has written about Singapore math on her website. She was a former math teacher, now homeschool uh, mom, who also tutors math, and is um, she highly recommended the Singapore math. So you can see the influence come through Math with Confidence. Another similar thing that I see in both is that in the Home Instructor's Guide, both have bold words, whatever the parent is supposed to say. So it's really easy to look down and you can tell what you're supposed to say um, just at first glance. And then what the kid is supposed to say or the answer to that question is in just regular writing. So um, fairly easy to like skim through and just visually see what you might need to say or rephrase. So both are pretty heavy on using like 10 frames, manipulative pieces, and um, like number bonds and things like that. But they don't come with any pieces and so you'll either have to print out um, stuff from the back of each home instructor's guide or, or I recommend buying a few things. We got these number cubes. Um, these are really helpful in just like especially kindergarten first grade year in making connections of when you're doing sets of 10 like three of one color and seven of another, two of one color, eight of another. Um, also really recommend the tangrams. These are worth their weight in gold and used a lot and just fun to play with. And um, then I also bought some place value pieces. Um, comes with some of these hundred blocks and a thousand block. And then and then also comes with um, a, like a place value board. Um, even though Singapore is yeah considered advanced and math with confidence is considered middle of the road, I still feel like they both do a really good job with um, just kind of giving your kids a good understanding of why something is added to be that number, um, why it might be subtracted this way, um, and giving them multiple ways to solve the same thing and letting them eventually choose which way they like. Um, so you'll see that in both curriculums. And then um, both curriculums are mastery based with review added in. So you stick with a subject till you know it really well. And then 
there are review um, pages built in with the Mastery and Beyond from Singapore and then also the back pages of the student book in Math with Confidence. Okay, so on to some of the differences because I know that's what you actually want to know. A couple of basic things, just straight up. Um, Math with Confidence has four day a week work week with a fifth day of just like optional games and review. Singapore 2022 has a five day work week. The home instructors guides are so different. And um, one with Math with Confidence is just extremely user friendly for me. I love opening it. It's like feels very open and go to me. I do need our math pieces to be nearby um, for it to actually feel like open and go. <laughs> um, but I feel like I can just kind of read through the bold parts, tell me what to teach. There's a picture for every single activity and um, it's just really easy to follow. And then Singapore math, um, there's hardly any pictures in the home instructor's guide. There's a ton of these like side bubbles and teaching tip bubbles and focus question bubbles and all of these different components on a page. My eyes sometimes are like, what am I supposed to actually do before I lose my son's attention? And um, there's a lot less of like, teach this this way and explain it this way. And there's instead in the Singapore Home Instructor's Guide, there's more like, ask this question, ask this question, and they're bold. So you can quickly look down and see which questions you're supposed to ask. but basically the questions are leading your child to the answer. There's not as much like formal teaching script, if that makes sense. Honestly, like we don't end up using the home instructor's guide as much as I think I'm supposed to. It's just a little bit hard to follow and it's dull. And my son is like, mom, can I just do my worksheet? He doesn't always want me to ask him all these questions that probably honestly do develop a deeper understanding of like, why are we doing this? Or why do you start subtracting in the ones column and then move to the tens column and then the hundreds column instead of the other way around? Like it kind of forces them to answer why and it forces them to explain it back to you almost, but it's not as much like actual teaching as I would kind of think that I would need. Um, so. Just to give you an example of what it looks like in here, this would be um, a lesson for my son. We'd have this page, um, and this picture, there's always a picture that starts with, and I'm supposed to let him explore that and not like teach him anything for that. And then the learn part underneath here is the next section where we go through and kind of do the math of the why behind like that picture that we saw. Um, and there's questions in this, in the home instructor's guide for me to lead him through the why there's pictures right here that help lead him through how we would solve that problem. But generally speaking, if I'm honest, my son just tends to figure it out and do it himself without me asking him all of these questions. When we get to a new concept, I will always check the home instructor's guide to see is there like a specific activity that I'm supposed to do for deeper understanding because um, there's not always an activity. And then um, if there is, I try to do it. If he seems like he's not getting something, we'll go back and try and like ask all of the questions because sometimes I skip some of the questions in the home instructor's guide. But in general, he's a pretty mathy kid and he gets a lot of this on his own. He gets annoyed that I ask him so many questions from the home instructor's guide. And so I try to just let him solve it and ask me questions when he has and then do the activities as I see them if they're new ones. And then there's going to be like a learn together on each day, on each um, lesson. And then the practice on your own is really for him to do on his own, assuming that he gets what we just learned or, um, yeah, oftentimes he wants to do the whole, all the worksheets by himself. But, um, here's an example of like what it would look like for me to read from the home instructor's guide. So for the learn, there's like all the stuff you need. There's like, let him explore. Don't talk to him. Here's a focus question over here. Um, that says, how do I know whether I need to rename when finding the sum of two four digit numbers? And the answer, here's a teaching tip down here that says, although your student can use words like carry to describe the action of renaming, encourage him to use proper place value language. <laughs> so like, you know, just, just a lot going on on this page. And then finally, we get to the part of his worksheet that's called learn here. And it says, um, Encourage your student to first estimate his or her answer by rounding the numbers to the nearest hundred fluently. 
um, skipping ahead, then in bold, this is what I would say to my son. What do you notice about the tens place? And he would say so something like, when the seven tens and six tens are added, there are 13 tens. Then I would say the next bold thing, which says, how can 13 tens be renamed? Then it says, show your student how to add digits in each place value using the place value chips and the vertical algorithm. Have him or her align the place values and rename the 10 tens as 100 using the vertical algorithm. Do Remind. notice that there are no pictures in here as far as like setting something up to show your child, whereas Math with Confidence would absolutely have a picture of what we would be doing right there. Um, there are more questions that I'm supposed to ask. So it says, provide them, provide your student with place value chips and have them solve the problems. Remind them to estimate the answers. Um, and then here is something in bold, which I would ask him, what strategies do you use to add? Um, how do you know when to rename? What would help you in finding the actual answer? How can you write the vertical form? Does it matter which number you write first in the vertical form? And um, that is that is all that I'm supposed to say as far as like what it tells me to say. There's more information on here that says like, this is why we have you ask that question. This is why we have you ask the next question. But it's just noisy and hard for me to sometimes look down and be like, what am I supposed to say before I lose him? Whereas check this out in the home instructor's guide for math with confidence. I'll flip to my daughter's last lesson. And what you notice, what I notice first thing is all of the pictures. It's easy to replicate the exact activity that you're supposed to do. In every single lesson in here, what you'll see is a warm up, which is like review of, you know, coins, games. So there will also be activities that are with the current lesson. And I try to always do those um, because I think that is like the foundation of this program. <laughs> um, sorry, there's a baby in here playing, so it's a little, a little bit noisy. If you skipped these and you only did the worksheets with Math with Confidence, you would be, um, you would not be getting the full program at all. Like you'd be cutting out two thirds of the meat basically. I wish that Singapore Math had more, um, more of these that were easy to do and fun to do and game based. Um, they do have visuals, but they're just not as often like fun games, I guess I'd say. What you'll see here is that the words are also bolded, like whatever you're supposed to say, just like Singapore Math had. And so um, for instance, Last week, you learned how to add one-digit numbers to two-digit numbers in your head. This week, you'll learn how to mentally add two-digit numbers to two-digit numbers. We'll start with easier ones today and work up to harder numbers in the next two lessons. And then it says, show your child the first problem at the top of the workbook. Um, before we add, so another spot in bold here. Before we add, let's split the numbers into tens and ones. What's the expanded form of 31? What's the expanded form of 25? And the, num the answers are here. Um, and it says, have your child draw part, part, part total lines and show the expanded form of both numbers. So it's going to go through step by step for me with the pictures. So easy to follow. So simple. There's no distracting sideline, like bubbles of like teaching tip, this focus tip that, you know, this is why we're asking this question. And this is why we're asking this question. Um, log in here for some extra stuff on this thing. Like it's just all here, easy to follow. Um, so another difference that I wanna point out is that Singapore Math does have a few extra worksheets, like more so than Math with Confidence. There's probably two to three a day my son does, um, whereas my daughter does a front and a back every day. Honestly, like some problems on in Singapore Math, like as you can see here, like, you know, this is one problem that you're doing. So it takes a page, but it's just one problem. Here's a page, but it's like literally the same problem as the other side. And um, then, you know, you can see here, there would be like this many on a page. So it's not outrageous, I don't think. Another difference that I do want to just point out is seems like Singapore math to me so far, at least up through third grade, does have more um, word problems. And Math with Confidence does have word problems. It just seems to me a little bit like Singapore math um, weaves them in more regularly. One of the things we might consider doing in the future is just buying one of their um, additional workbooks that they have 
I think it's for the US version, but we could still use it. And they're just additional story problems. They have them divided by year, so we could find ones at our level. And that just might be really helpful as far as like, you know, challenging my other kids to think through more word problems. Um, I'm not going to start that yet, but I know that's an option in the future if I want. Another difference I do notice is that there are just more hands-on games in Math with Confidence. Um, Singapore Math does have activities. They are known to be a hands-on program as well, but I feel like there's more like put out the place value chips activities, you know, take out the, um, take out the number blocks activities. And there's like hands-on stuff, but there's less games. There's less deck of cards with these set of rules that make it really fun. Like Math with Confidence is stuffed with fun games and um, Kate's kind of done a really good job at just making something every, almost every lesson that's like fun and unusual and we take out our deck of cards all the time and she's got a new spin on the same old thing and so um, I just like that. Personally I think it it's a fun way to do math and um, I wish that Singapore math actually had more games. So for me, those are kind of the main differences. A lot of this is going to depend on your preference as a teacher and on your student's response to the curriculum. And it feels like it's impossible sometimes to know how that combo will go until you just pick something and try it. And so um, for my oldest, like if math with confidence was available, I'm not actually sure that I would switch him to it because he's doing well with Singapore. I know it's challenging him. Um, I know in my head that it's like a kind of a top tier program. So I'm thinking he's my very math minded kid. Maybe this is a really good fit for him. Um, but I do think all my other kids could probably manage doing it. It's just, I think their version of math with confidence is so much more fun. What I find myself doing with my third grader is like, I mean, he could still really benefit from some of the games they're doing as like review. And I haven't really done that with him, but we do um, try to like kind of get out other math games that just help use math um, without feeling like school. I have an entire list of math games that I will leave a link in the description. Just extra fun kind of game schooling math games that we do together. I wish that Singapore kind of had just more of that built in and um, maybe there are on the extension and the reteach, but like I said, I don't want one more thing to log into and have to go figure out, you know, what what's in there. If you've used either program, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Just let me know like, you know, what you're thinking, um, strengths and weaknesses of both. The thing I hear the most is, worry from people that math with confidence is um, middle of the road or not enough and um, I'm not sure that that is going to be an issue <laughs> and if it is I think we'll just supplement. With Singapore math I'm thinking you know if it's lacking in the fun area that's also easy to supplement in some ways um, because we can just buy math games and um, if I need to at some point maybe look into a video subscription to help me teach it, that's an option with Singapore as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Anyways, I got a cranky baby here so I gotta hop off, but I hope that this was helpful to you and um, please give this video a like if you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any um, questions or comments.